Um, I hope you are all well. I'm Lordi Gabriel Molisho, and my presentation is about the design, characterization, and functionalization of oligonucleotide probes for portable diagnostic assays targeting Salmonella and Tricatitis. I'm currently a master's student at the University of Johannesburg under the supervision of Prof. Kondia and the co-supervision of Prof. Makakato. So coming to this slide, we have the world, um, a world map that shows the distribution of salmonella type infection around the world with a prevalence in Africa, South America, and Asia. Uh, making up uh, making up approximately 11 million cases per year with more than a hundred thousand deaths recorded and there have been numerous outbreak of samula typhi but in south africa where i um, actually reside the latest recorded outbreak happened in delmas in pumalanga province in 2005 so samula typhi is one of those diseases that need to be monitored throughout um, in a constant basis to avoid any uh, surge in infection that cannot be controlled. How can one be infected with salmonella typhi? We have uh, mainly the fecal to oral route where you actually consume uh, contaminated food or contaminated water and that's how uh, salmonella actually gets into the system and because of its acid tolerance gene it can go through the stomach and invade the mucous membranes of the intestinal cells so with our project we are trying to design probes oligonucleotide probes that can be used in different types of portable diagnostic assays in order to actually monitor salmonella typhi in environment, in the environment, and more specifically in water or other type of samples. One can ask himself, why would we make the choice of using nucleic acid probes? So we have realized that with nucleic acid probes, we have an improved stability compared to antibodies. Uh, they are more specific, they are robust, they allow us to have a rapid detection since they can anneal quite fast, they increase our screening capabilities, they require minimal sample preparation, and they can be easily integrated into micro devices, which is what we would expect people to start using in order to get them into the field, get them into remote areas. Coming to our methodology, what we did under our methodology, we determine a specific gene, a gene that can only be found in salmonella typhi. Then we decided to design nucleic acid probes candidates. And um, after designing those nucleic acid probe candidates, we decided to assess the specificity using BLAST, uh, BLAST uh, under NCBI and the specific tool for blast N. Then we decided to synthesize our nucleic acid probe, the one that we find to be quite specific to the gene. And then we synthesize cold nanoparticles, we characterize them, and then those cold nanoparticles that we characterize had to be um, kept with uh, the reporter probe in order to serve as a detection system. Then we went on and did in vitro assessment of the specificity of the probes. Obviously, you will realize that not all the results are shared here. And obviously, it's for the purpose of um, keeping some of the details of the project um, away from the public for now. But I will generally talk about what we have done and what we have achieved so far. So coming to our result and discussions. So to make a to make the right choice of the gene we're supposed to target, we use this article by Goye and colleagues, 
where they quantified five novel salmonella type specific genes that they, that could be used for as markers for di diagnosis. So we took one of those genes and we took one of the shortest ones, the one called SCY0326, uh, and that's the gene we decided to use for this specific um, for, to develop oligonucleotide form. So once we have retrieved, we retrieved the STY0326 gene sequence, we decided to generate two probes, so the reporter probe and the capture probe. And both probes were complementary to one section of, of the gene as displayed in the image. And this is, um, we can unfortunately uh, show the exact probe we decided to go with, but we had to go through different nucleic acid probe candidates until we could find the right one. And the probe we actually chose, the specific probe we chose, was 30 base pair in length. So after choosing the probes, um, we obviously went through blast N. And after doing blast N, we, did, we realized that our two probes were actually specific for for, salmon, for for the gene uh, we targeted. So since our two probes were actually good to use and they could flank our gene, we then decided to go over and synthesize gold nanoparticle using the, the citrate reduction method. And following the synthesis, we went on and did a X-ray diffraction analysis of the synthesized nanoparticle. And we could see that we actually obtained gold nanoparticle since our potent was uh, in line with the reference potent for gold uh, nanoparticles. So following the XRD assessment, we went on and we did a transmission electromicroscopy analysis of our nanoparticles. And we were able to see that we obtained spherical nanoparticle, gold nanoparticles and the size was approximately 20 nanometers, which was actually deemed good for us to obtain a visual, um, read, uh, a visual readout signal from our nanoparticle. So the whole aim was to make probes, and those probes, one of from those probes, one of them had to be attached to uh, one of the probes had to be attached to copper nanoparticles. So that golden particles could give us a readout uh, signal once they are near to the target gene. In vitro assessment, we were able to see that our probe actually are near to the gene, and we still have to conduct some more tests as this is an ongoing study to actually determine the limit of detection and some other factors. In conclusion, we were able to see that it was possible to actually design probes, nucleic acid probes, that can actually anneal to a target gene sequence and actually use gold nanoparticle as a readout signal in order to actually avoid using or prevent ourselves from using expensive equipment since we want to develop these probes for use in rural areas. So we were able to see that we could achieve our aims we still have a long way to go in order to actually certify, certify sorry, our results, but at least the preliminary result we could obtain from this project can show us and can clearly display that we are on the right direction. I would like to acknowledge the following people, the super, uh, my supervisor, the research group and the University of Johannesburg, these are my uh, references and I would like to thank you all for your attention.